gorgeous out here. Fresh snow in the last week has made it really pretty. Warmer temperatures today. High teens, low 20s. Even warmer tomorrow. I might come back. Just gorgeous back here. Just super remote. I think I'm officially in the boundary waters now. Only a little bit further to go. Ah, I made it. That is an old sign. I see the tracks, the people who came before me. And it looks slushy. It is a nice little 22 to 25 acre lake. It looks like they cleared off a spot they're gonna be fishing. So, I'm not going to disturb them after all their hard work. After all their hard work I benefited from, I'm not going to take their spot. So I'm going to fish up here along this shoreline. Scouted some spots earlier that look like good rock rubble in five feet of water. So we'll see. I'm not going to put a whole lot of effort into it as this is a new lake. Just gonna find four to six feet of water on a flat and set up. This is what living in Ely is all about. Being able to do a day trip into the boundary waters to sight fish brook trout on a remote lake. Probably only gets visited by, you know, a couple dozen people a year. Really feel privileged to have this in my backyard. It's gonna be awesome. Time to put down the camera and get to work. So this actually looks like a pretty good spot. Inside bend. There's downed logs all along the shoreline. I think it's about five feet right here, which would be perfect. But we gotta see. As with most trout lakes, this lake is just a big pothole, 45 foot hole right in the middle, pretty straightforward shoreline, gently sloping. So I'm just gonna look for a flat shoreline in five feet of water. They kind of just cruise. I've heard people refer to it as like a NASCAR track, just going in circles. They'll just come through in waves. You won't see a fish for 45 minutes and all of a sudden out of nowhere, two or three of them will show up. So I think if I'm on a spot that's likely to hold bait fish and you know, little invertebrates and crayfish that sooner or later the trout will show up. So I don't think, other than being in the key, correct depths from three to six feet of water, I don't think it's too crucial that you pick a dynamite spot. On a small lake like this that's stocked with hundreds and hundreds of trout every other year, or every, every year, or every other year, um, there's tons of trout in here. So it's just a matter of time before they find you. So this is where I'm gonna drill my first hole about 25 feet from shore, might be too deep here, but we'll check, it's a good first spot. Let's see what we've got. Guessing by my 16 rotations on the auger, it's probably eight or nine inches here. Oh my gosh, this is near perfect. Flat, hard bottom seven feet. I'm going to back up 10 feet and drill another hole and see where we're at. Yeah, seven and a half. Five 
five and a half. So we are on a little bit of a slope, which is not a bad thing. Marking something down there. Suspended at two and a half feet under the ice. I'm guessing there's a branch. I'm gonna go to the left here. Closer to shore a little bit. See if I can get right at four and a half or five feet of water and get away from whatever that is. Seven. Yeah, there must be a tree here because now I can't even tell where bottom is. Probably at about five, but there's crap all over the sonar. So, I might go this way. Shoveling for now. Don't think I'll be able to see, but it's worth a shot. Make sure there aren't any big boulders or logs below. Also make sure not to let go of this thing. Right at five feet to the top of the ice, so certainly less than five feet. Bottom. Just do a small one for now. Arms are burning. All right. Making progress. Time to saw. Looks like sand mucks and stick. Easy when it's only eight inches thick. Arms are cramping already. It's been a while since I've done this. So it's loose. I'm gonna push it back towards the camera because I wanna push it towards deeper water. If I push it shallower, the fish are gonna be more likely to see it and it'll spook them because it's out of the ordinary. Obviously not normal to have a huge block of ice up in shallow water. So I'm gonna get it under and then push it as far as I can that way. The ice floats, so it'll launch out. Probably slide 20 or 30 feet away if I do this right. One more. Oops. I'm on. There it goes. I don't know if you could hear that on camera, but it dunk dunk. Looks good so far. Big viewing window. Now I'm gonna shave out around to make it kind of like a upside down funnel so I can see further. I can see the fish come in.
All right. Since that wasn't that difficult, I'm just gonna go ahead and drill another hole and expand this. It'll be fun to be able to see a wider viewing angle. Alley's probably shallower, so I'm gonna do it here. Okay. Hopefully this is a good spot and that's the last hole I drilled today. Cause my arms are already beat. go. All right, it's free. Same thing, push as far as I can towards deep water. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Love that. All right. Pro tip for you. If you're going to do this, do not waste your time with an ice scoop. Use a net. You're going to want a net to land the fish anyway, otherwise they make a mess. Splash water everywhere and you'll probably lose them. So, Bring a net and it makes cleaning out this gigantic sight fishing hole a lot easier. A couple of scoops in your clean. If you don't break your net. is looking great. There's sticks going right here in the corner. There's gravel right here. There's one stick right in the middle on the bottom. Deep water over there. I'm really psyched about this spot. I think it's going to be good. goes. Um, I've got a pretty small shack, a three person, so I think my cameras are going to be too close to the action, but we'll try to point them straight down the hole and see what we can capture once it gets dark in here. We'll be able to get a better view of what's happening underwater. There's some big boulders here, a big log. Not ideal, super shallow that direction behind the camera, deeper this way. So I'll probably set up to the left, try to fish over here, and then this camera can catch what's going on. So I got a little bit more setup to do, but I'm almost ready to fish. Boundary Waters Trout Opener 2021. I'm so excited. Got a little skim ice here. That's why I brought the heater. Not so much to warm me. But to stop the skim ice from ruining the cool shot. No way. I caught him. Oh my goodness. Oh, we'll put him back in the water. Did 
just a micro trout. Got him. Got him. Kidding me. Oh, that was perfect timing. Fishing for two minutes. Oh, this might be my personal best brook trout. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> I picked a good spot. Oh my gosh. Alright, quiet down there, fishy. Oh my gosh. Quarters. Beauty. Look at that. Just a beautiful stocked brook trout. Just a big male, big jaw. Gorgeous. 16 and three quarters. Probably two pounds. Pound and a half. Look at those fins. Got him. Look at this. Look at those fins. Beautiful fish. <laughs> Could not have asked for a better start. Boundary Waters Trout Opener 2021. Put them on the ice and get back for some more. How exciting. Gone. Go back to the other bait. Small trout might have trouble with it, but he didn't seem to be interested in wax worms. Another one. Oh, he's a good one. Another good fish. <laughs> All right. I'm loving this lake. Oh, he's strong. Big ones really like the spoon. Fish number two is another absolute beauty. Probably 15 and a half or 16 inches. This one was a lot better fight than the big one. Ooh, there we go. Another beautiful brookie. How fun is this? I'm gonna get the bump board so I can measure it. Hi, bud. I gotta be careful, I'm only allowed three over 16. Hi. Yeah, I caught a fishy. What do you think? Oh, not even close. 15. All right, I got two fish on the ice. All ready, so I'm gonna take a break and show you all what I'm using. 
rule number one with stream trout stocked. Stream trout fishing is, they're not too bright. They grew up in holding ponds and then they've been on these lakes that don't get much pressure. So the ones you catch probably haven't even seen a lure or very few. Um, so don't overthink it, don't go crazy. Basically anything you'd use for panfish or walleye will work. Just downsize a little bit on the walleye baits. This is my confidence bait, so by no means will this work for everyone, but I absolutely love these VMC, I think they're slender spoons, or tingler spoons, I think slender spoons. Uh, this one's got a little shiny flash spoon on it, so I wouldn't have to tip it with bait, um, but I do. I use, I just get fat heads or crappie minnows, whatever is small and shiny. And I'll just pop off the head. And tip it like you would jigging for walleye. I've never had a fish even touch the spoon. A trout anyway. They all, there's the presentation right there. They all slurp that minnow head in. They're incredibly precise. Big lake trout will do this and little stream trout will do it as well. Um, but what I do is jig aggressively. That spoon just up and down, flutters, it looks super natural, calls them in, and then when they get close, I just bounce it and slowly lift the rod. I don't know what it is about getting the fish to come up, but just like walleye, when they're coming up and they feel like the bait is swimming away and trying to escape is when they hit, usually. So this last one was a little more finicky, which is surprising that he fought so well. He wasn't super aggressive when he hit the bait. Uh, but this one was a little finicky, so I just kind of bounced it up and then stopped raising it, kept bouncing it, and he just slurped it in and I set the hook. Uh, the first one was a little more aggressive and followed it. Um, I also have rigged up just a teeny tiny little bucktail jig chartreuse with two wax worms on the end um, that's for my smaller fish or if a fish comes in and isn't interested in my spoon or if it comes in and it hits my spoon and the bait gets knocked off and I want to get the fish while it's still in the area um, I go with my second rod but you're only allowed one rod here in Minnesota on these stocked regulated designated stream trout lakes I can't use two. Um, you also can't use live bait. So the minnows I brought in, I salted and preserved and put them in the freezer and busted them out today. They like salted minnows. Um, bait doesn't need to be live if you're tearing the head off and just using the head to jig anyway. So be aggressive and when they get in the area, slow it down a little bit. Um, but yeah, again, don't overthink it. Uh, these trout aren't super intelligent like the brook trout you'll find up in mountain streams and mountain lakes that occur naturally and are used to eating flies in very shallow stream cold water. Um, these ones eat pretty much anything that moves. Um, so just use a bait you're confident with and get out there. Alright, time to get back at it. I had an absolutely fantastic day. Caught three trout. Um, one was my personal best, largest ever brook trout at 17 inches, and one was my smallest ever at probably five and a half or six inches. And then I also caught a 15 incher. 
So I'm very excited to bake those or toss them in a frying pan. They're going to be fantastic. If you haven't eaten brook trout before, it's incredible. It's usually um, really dark meat, kind of looks like sockeye salmon. It has a lot of flavor. Um, and as far as I know, they taste good when they're humongous, too. The two trout I caught were kind of medium, medium plus for this area. The biggest trout I've caught in this area for stocked trout is a 20 inch rainbow. So a 17 inch is a respectable fish. I'm excited about that. I'm not going to advertise the name of this lake on my video because I don't want people to go crazy. But if you're seriously interested in coming up here and fishing for brook trout, send me a personal message and I'll get you the information. Um, I'm happy to share it. I just don't want to advertise it to everyone. Um, these are small lakes. They don't get pressured a lot, which is why the fishing is good. And if everybody flocks here, the fishing is not going to be good. This one hasn't been stocked since 2018, so I'm hoping they stock it this summer in 2021 and it'll be good for the next couple of years. There's big drought in here though. That's exciting. I've seen a lot of trout. Um, four or five different year classes.